Hello and welcome. I am Amedio602, and today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about armor in Warzone, and I'm also going to throw in a few tips that might be new to you. Before we get into the in-depth timing analysis of repairing your armor, let's cover the basics, just in case there are any new players out there. In Warzone, your character can equip up to three plates of armor, and each plate adds 50 hit points to your character's health pool. This gives you a total maximum health of 250 if you have all three plates equipped. This 250 health applies to headshots as well as body shots, even though the armor doesn't cover your character's head. In addition to wearing up to three plates of armor, your character has room for five armor plates in his inventory and you can purchase a full stack of five armor plates for $1,500 at a buy station. Of course, you can also request armor plates from your teammates. You can also drop armor plates on the ground for your teammates to pick up. Once a plate has been damaged or broken, it can be repaired with one of the plates from your inventory. Your character will always restore a partial armor plate before installing a new one. So if you have, for instance, 80% of an armor plate left, then the very first armor plate that you put in during the repair process is only going to take that armor plate up to full. This is something that I would like to see changed in Warzone because it makes more sense to me to put in an entirely fresh armor plate rather than pulling out an old one that's still at 80% and putting in a new one. But that's just the way it is right now. Now that we've covered the basics of the armor system, let's move into a more detailed analysis of how it works. I'd like to break this into four phases for fixing armor. In the first phase, you put away your weapon, and you equip the armor. Your character then unzips his or her armor vest and installs the first plate of armor. If you continue to hold in the armor repair button, your character installs a second or third plate of armor, and then finally you switch back to your gun. Overall, the whole process takes about four and a half seconds for most weapons. There are a couple of tips to know to minimize this time, and we're getting to those later in the video. One thing I found out when I was doing all this testing is that this is a very inconsistent process. And when I say inconsistent, I'm talking about the timings here. One thing for you math nerds out there is to know that the testing was done on a PS4 Pro, so the game should have been running at a smooth 60 frames per second, which gives us 16 and 2 thirds milliseconds per frame. I opened my video editor and I did a frame by frame analysis of the armor repair process. And to my surprise, I was getting very inconsistent results. You can even see on the screen here, in some side-by-side -side tests, I'm using the same gun with the same attachments, and I'm getting very different times for repairing that first plate of armor. So if you've ever felt like sometimes when you repair armor it's faster than other times, well, that's because that's just the way it is right now. I'm not sure if this is by design or if this is a bug in Warzone, but I'll leave speculation for that up to you. I was not able to find an attachment that would improve the armor repair time, but one key thing to know about repairing armor is that repairing the first armor plate takes a whole lot more time than the second or third armor plate. Real quick, just for the engineers out there, when measuring the time differences, I tried to be as consistent as possible. The first frame that I counted was the first frame before the blue circle began to fill. The blue circle, by the way, always took 12 frames or 200 milliseconds to fill completely. Once the blue circle was filled, the character swaps from the equipped weapon to the armor. After the armor is equipped, your character pulls out an armor plate and puts it into the vest. When the armor appeared on the HUD, I took the first plate measurement. Continuing to hold in the triangle button, I waited for the second blue bar to appear on the HUD for the second piece of armor, and likewise for the third and final armor piece. Once the armor repair had been completed, and the character switched back to his weapon, I stopped measuring frames, I took the final frame measurement, when the hipfire reticle appeared on the screen. First, I'd like to talk about the second and the third armor plates, since those were the most consistent. The second armor plate took 84 frames, or about 1.4 seconds to repair. The third armor plate took roughly 90 frames, or 1.5 seconds to repair. I saw a very large variation in the time that it took to put away your weapon and apply the first armor plate. And I was seeing variations in the range of about 7 to 10 frames. At 60 FPS, that's about 150 milliseconds difference, even when I'm using the same gun and measuring frame by frame. This is well outside the typical variation of just one or possibly two frames for measuring something like this in Call of Duty. And in a game where milliseconds count, that's significant. I saw other large variations when putting away the armor and switching back to the equipped weapon. But I do have a trick to handle that, at least for most SMGs and assault rifles. 
and we're going to get to that in a little bit. It's also important to know that the type of weapon you have equipped has a noticeable impact on how long it takes to repair your armor. The second and third plate of armor is the same no matter which weapon you have equipped, so I left those out just to keep things as simple as possible. For a pistol, it takes about 4 seconds to repair one plate of armor. Submachine guns come in at around the same time as a pistol, which is about 2.5 seconds to put away your weapon and repair the first plate of armor, and about another 1.25 seconds to pull your weapon back out again. The times for assault rifles varied pretty widely, and I'm guessing that this is based on attachments, but I was not able to find out which attachment it is that causes this. And by the way, it's not the amped perk. I did quite a bit of testing with the amped perk, and I saw that it had no noticeable difference. And in some cases, it seemed like my samples with the amped perk were actually slower than my base samples. Again, I'm not sure if this is intentional or if this is just a bug in the game, but that's just the way it is right now. Assault rifles take anywhere between 3 to 3.5 seconds to repair the first plate of armor, and about 1.3 seconds to pull your weapon back out afterward. Sniper rifles and shotguns are about the same as assault rifles, and this really surprised me for the shotguns, because shotguns are usually a very mobile and very fast weapon type. I'm not sure if this is a balancing factor or if it's just a bug, but in any case, for shotguns, sniper rifles, and assault rifles, you're looking at anywhere from 3 to about 3.5 seconds to repair your first piece of armor, and about one and a third to one and a half seconds to pull your weapon back out afterward. Unsurprisingly, light machine guns were the slowest weapon class, and the LMGs that I tested took at least three and a half seconds to repair the first piece of armor, and about one and two thirds seconds to pull the weapon back out after repairing the armor. Now for the big question of the day. Is there anything that you can do to improve your armor repair time? And the answer is yes, I have a few suggestions for you. The first tip is pretty obvious, and that is to repair your armor two or even three plates at a time whenever possible. There are far too many players out there that just repair their armor one plate at a time, and that is much slower than repairing all three plates at once. My next tip is that if you have a pistol or a submachine gun equipped, and you need to repair your armor, go ahead and repair your armor before switching to any bigger guns, because you're probably going to save yourself anywhere from a half to three quarters of a second just by doing that. And in a game where milliseconds count, that could be the difference between life and death. Finally, since a lot of what we're doing is switching weapons back and forth, I decided to do a little bit of testing with the Amped Weapon perk, which is a Tier 3 perk which lets you swap weapons faster. It lets you swap back and forth between weapons almost instantly, but as far as I could tell it had no measurable impact on repairing your armor, so unfortunately Amped isn't going to do it for you. But one thing you can do is you can skip part of the animation that plays when you're pulling your weapon back out. And you can cancel part of this animation just by double tapping your switch weapon button, which on PlayStation is the triangle and on Xbox is the Y button. In the tests that I did, reload canceling with a pistol saved me 25 frames, and reload canceling with an SMG or an assault rifle saved me about 30 frames, which is roughly half a second. Attempting to reload cancel with some of the other weapons seemed broken though. For instance, when I tried this with the LMG, it would just switch weapons on me. So your mileage may vary on LMGs, shotguns, and sniper rifles. But if you're using a pistol, a submachine gun, or an assault rifle, then I'd recommend playing around with trying to cancel out of that final animation, in order to save yourself just a little bit of time. And if you'd like more tips like these in the future, then subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on my future uploads. And I've left a couple of other great videos on the screen right now for you to check out. As always, thank you very much for watching.